Uh, this is Brent Smith. I'm the Common Constitutionalist, and it's a glorious day here in New England. Lovely to be outside again. Hooray. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the now defunct, thank heavens, active shooter game, video game, for want of a better term, and some of the moral underpinnings of the active shooter game, how ridiculous it is. Um, school shootings, all sorts of things like that. But before I get started, the first thing I wanted to do is share with you something that I discovered as I walked, as I drove into the park and parked my car and looked around. There's a guy doing slack lining, and it was fascinating. So let me share a couple of seconds of uh, a, a minute or two of the video that I took of this guy slack lining. It's absolutely unbelievable. And then we'll get to the podcast today on the Common Constitutional. Any chance of doing one of those sit-down things again? Don't blow it, brother. <laughs> Sorry. Holy crap. Look at this. I can do a better run for you. Once That's all right. That's all right. I'm actually, I'm supposed to be doing a podcast, but this is just fascinating. Holy shnikes. How long you been doing this? Uh, eight to ten years. Holy me. crap, okay. So 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 this isn't something you just kinda come out on the weekend and say, hey, I think I'll do this. Uh, yeah. I've made this a big part of my life over the years. Are you able to make a career out of something like this or is this just more of a it, it can be done. It's... Are they comp are there competitions? Oh, right, come on, man, no way. Yeah, it's called slack lining. There's, this is considered a long line. Then there's trick lining where you tighten it a lot more. And it's a lot yeah, more I guess so, right. And then there's high lining where you take this and you just put it way up high. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> That's incredible. You're watching the Common Constitutionalist Weekend Video Podcast. Okay, so welcome back again. My name is Brent Smith. I'm the Common Constitutionalist, and today we're going to be discussing. Um, an active the game the video game called active shooter and school shootings in general so this is from the tribunist or maybe it's tribunist I don't know and they write after a string of school shootings in recent weeks a video game that allows players to assume the persona of a gunman has sparked a massive backlash set to be released on June 6th Players of the game will have the options to either be a member of a SWAT team combating the shooter or be the gunman. So you can actually be the school shooter. Right off the bat, your mind goes, it should, if you're a reasonable, sane human being, moral human being, who would think such a thing up? Who, who would think that this would be a marketable video game? What kind of amoral jackweed would think that this is okay to do, to produce, and to market, and to put online for kids to play? And what kind of parent would allow their kid to play such a game? What kind of amoral jackweed would play such a game as to be an active shooter? It's just unbelievable. So active shooter features a simulated school environment. And that's what the, the I mean, is if you, if, if you know about this, okay, you, you, anybody, like I said, anybody with any kind of moral compass at all would have to agree with what I'm saying here. Uh, uh, and if you don't agree, you think that this is an okay type of video game, you, you need to be uh, committed to some insane asylum, brother. Uh, that's all I got to say. Um, 
Active, shooters features, active Shooter features a simulated school environment, according to a report by Fox News. Pick your rule. Pick your, excuse me, pick your role, gear up, and fight or destroy, says the game's description. Only in Active Shooter, you will be able to pick the role of an, an elite SWAT team member or the actual shooter. And that was a quote. Depending on your role, your objective might be to protect and extract or hunt and destroy. Inside a school. So you're going around as an active shooter killing students in a school. Who thinks this is okay? It's just, I, I don't know. I'm dumbfounded by the whole idea of it. Featured on Stream, a digital distribution platform managed by Valve, the developer states, quote, please, <laughs> please do not take any of this seriously, unquote. But that statement won't likely to be enough to quell critics. Well, it ain't going to be enough to quell this bloody critic. That's for darn sure. As players take on games challenge, <laughs> games challenge, I mean, uh, they're treating this like, well, whatever. As players take on the game's challenges, they are given game stats that show how many civilians and police officers were killed during the encounter. Can you believe that? Who? What? I just... Ugh. But then again, it's the same type of people who will... Um, who will call up Social Security recipients, old people that are living off of Social Security. They don't, they don't have two dimes to rub, uh, to rub together except for maybe some uh, old worn out pension that they had from World War II or something like that. And uh, some scam artists will call up and rob them blind. Those are the same type of people that, these, that, that the active shooter people um, would, uh, would cater to. The, the people with absolutely no moral compass at all. Uh, they have no compunction about stealing people, uh, stealing people blind or, or killing them dead. I, I don't know. The game has received harsh <laughs> the game has received harsh criticism for releasing shortly after the mass shooting at Santa Fe High School in Texas, where 10 were killed and another 10 were wounded. Anti-gun violence organization uh, Infratrust stated that the video game is in very bad taste. You really, that's all you got to say is in very bad taste. It's a, it's abhorrent is what it is. Particularly since there have been 20, well, okay, now here we go. Particularly since there have been 22 school, shoot, school shootings throughout the U.S. in 2018 alone. All right, let's put this thing to bed right now. I know I didn't get to be once and for all, but I'd like to do it once and for all. <clears throat> I'm tired of hearing that there have been 20 school, 22, why, what? speak much 22 school shootings in 2018 alone there hasn't like i said that is an out and out lie um and it's made up by the lefty anti-gun control crowd but people just they just repeat it like so many mindless drones they hear this stuff they they figure it must be fact if cnn puts it out or if, or if some place like this anti-gun violence organization in for trust uh, puts it out or, or many other or news organizations latch on they don't do any research they don't bother uh, looking into this thing they just repeat 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 so what do you think when you hear of a school shooting all right some kid <laughs> with no doubt an AR-15 or some other big scary weapon mowing down his classmates mass destruction total carnage that's type, that type of stuff right that's what you think about a school shooting whether it's a mass shooting or a school shooting or whatnot, they're supposed to be synonymous, are they not? <clears throat> that's the that's the, at least the Rorschach reaction. You know, when you look at a Rorschach test, I've never done one, but you know, you look at these ink blots, and the doctor says, "Well, what do you see there?" And you're not allowed to think about it too much. You just react to what you see. Oh, it's a cloud, or it's a dragon, or whatever the crap it happens to be. That's your knee-jerk reaction. And we all fall prey to this thing. So that's when that's what people think about when they think of mass shootings and or school shootings because they're synonymous at this point. Um, like I said, some kid uh, he's got a he's got a big scary weapon and it's a semi-automatic weapon and he's mowing the kids down um, and uh, there's there's carnage everywhere and, and and bloodshed and kids dying and kids wounded and teachers dying and teachers. That's what you think about. That's the Rorschach reaction. <clears throat> But this is what the left does to advance the anti-gun agenda. They do this purposely. They change the terms over time. Um, just sneak it in, uh, you know, until you have a chance to, uh, until you get the entire public just 
repeating the new narrative. So global warming becomes climate change. Well, when did global warming become climate change? Do we even know when, those, when the terms um, equated one another, when they became as synonymous with one another, and then all of a sudden climate change just usurped uh, global warming, and now you don't ever hear about global warming. It's all climate change. And this is what they do. All you got to do is change a couple, change a couple words, and over time you keep repeating them until they become re, they're everyone's reality. And now global warming you hardly ever hear about anymore. It's all climate change, and it's the same thing with this. These tragic events used to be called mass shooting. Gee, why? Why are why are they called mass shootings? They're be called mass shootings because uh, I guess I think it's the the technical. Uh, term for this a you know, mass shooting um, the, uh, the the threshold it has to meet is at least three people are killed and that constitutes a mass shooting it doesn't have to be in school it could be at Dunkin Donuts or it could be at a you know an auditorium it could be anywhere um, somebody's backyard and that's a mass shooting or a church all right but now the term has been rebranded from mass shooting to school shooting and the reason why they rebranded it is, well, we'll get to that in a second. But the, it was a subtle change, and it's just just a little shift in, in verbiage, and now you don't hear about mass shootings much, you hear about school shootings. That's what we hear about, and that's what everybody's talking about now is school shootings. And that's supposed to equate directly to mass shootings. It doesn't necessarily. Um, how many people in Chicago die every year? But you never hear of it as a mass shooting. How many people die in Chicago on maybe school grounds and you don't hear of them as mass shootings, all right? Uh, whatever, I think I've beaten that dead word. So according to uh, CNN, one of these shootings has been happening at a school once, uh, more than once per week in 2018. That's the deal, okay? So, I mean, what do you say to that? Holy crap. I mean, it's just it's just flat out wrong is what it is. Um, that's what you would say if you were a thinking person. But what you would say that if you were an, an emotion-driven person and you hear this for the first time, you'd say, holy crap, that is so wrong. I'm going to, I'm going to tweet this out. And I'm going to repeat this um, verbatim that there's been 22 school shootings this year alone and that's some sort of record. They don't say that, but they infer that, all right? And then I'm going to tweet this to all of my mindless followers and ask them to retweet and share this tweet with all their mindless followers. And these, this is how these irrefutable facts become facts. They're not facts, but they, they magically become facts. So we're going to take a real quick break. I'll be right back to, uh, to go through some of these magical facts with you. Be right back. You're watching the Common Constitutionalist Video Podcast. Okay, I'm back. Let's go through some, some magical facts, just as a recap. Um, company came out with a, uh, or company or individual came out with a game called Active Shooter. It's where you get to play a video game as a school shooter, as an active shooter, like uh, the cruise guy or the other wing nuts uh, that have been active shooters. And you go around the school and you shoot students. What a great video game. Yay. Good job. Um, and then I got to speaking about the um, school shootings versus mass shootings how now everything is called a school shooting and you don't hear much about mass shootings anymore and that's purposeful in my opinion that's a purposeful um, dodge or uh, misdirection as it same as same as global change, global warming uh, morphed into climate change now mass shootings have morphed into school shootings and here's the reason why and this is a, this is a, this is the truth from Ben Shapiro who um, I got to tell you, the guy's young, but he's rapidly becoming my go-to guy for everything right and reasonable. So here's what he uh, here's what he shared with us. 
CNN used the following parameters for their count of 22 school shootings in 2018 alone. This is what they used as parameters for a school shooting, all right? A shooting that involved at least one person being shot, not including the shooter, all right? So that's a school shooting. A shooting that occurred on school grounds, we included grades uh, K through college, university level. We included gang violence, fights, and domestic violence. These are all school shootings. Domestic violence, gang violence, school shootings, okay? We included accidental discharge of a firearm as long as two of, as long as the first two parameters are met. So you got all that, okay? Some, at least one person has to be shot, not killed, but just shot, but not including the, uh, the, um, the shooter. The shooting had to, uh, had to occur somewhere on school, school ground. They used K through university level. Uh, they included gang violence, fights, and domestic violence, and they included accidental just, uh, discharge of a firearm as long as at least one person was shot and it, and it, would, uh, and it occurred on school grounds. So those are the parameters that CNN used. Pretty loosey-goosey if you asked me. So in other words, not mass shootings, but even purposeful shooting, not even purposeful shootings, not even shootings involving children. That's the point. Uh, if a gang member shot um, another gang member on school grounds, that's uh, during the summer. It's not school's not even in. That's a school shooting, according to CNN. That's categorized as a school shooting. So you know, gangs get together. They're on a school playground. One guy pulls out a piece, shoots another guy. That's a school shooting. That's according to CNN. That's a school shooting. If you ask anyone else if that would be considered a school shooting, no, that wouldn't be considered a school shooting. That's ridiculous. But these, again, this is the leftist agenda being advanced one by one by one. Change the terms from mass to school and, uh, and then change the parameters. Um, at least one person has to be shot to be a school shooting. That's not a mass shooting. Now that's just a shooting. Uh, it can be a gang. It could be a domestic dispute between a teacher and his wife in the parking lot during summer school. I don't know. So, <clears throat> here are just some of the 22 supposed shootings that CNN ran down. Okay, This is what they counted as school shooting. Now remember, keep in your head their, your Rorschach description of what a school shooting should be described as. All right. April 12th, they're counting back from recent to beginning of the year. April 12th, Renton, Missouri. Someone fired a gun in the parking lot of a track meet and one man was wounded. That's a school shooting. No, it's not. April 9th, Gloversville, New York. A student shot another student with a BB gun. That's a school shooting. A student shot another student with a BB gun. That's a school shooting. This is the statistic that when you hear 22 school shootings in one year, a BB gun. Okay, fine. I'm sure I'm surprised somebody didn't hit them with a paper clip and a rubber band. That would be a school shooting. Give me a frickin' break. March 13, Seaside, California. A teacher accidentally discharged a firearm during a public safety class. No one was killed. I don't even recall anybody being wounded, but they counted that anyway, and I remember doing, I think I either did an article, an audio article, or a podcast, or something on this thing, and I think that this was probably a setup, um, because this was a, the teacher was part of a gun safety group. All right, moving on, March 8th, Mobile, Alabama, a non-student was shot at an apartment on a University of South Alabama campus, so non-student, apartment, not even uh, technically school grounds, but it was an apartment on campus, school shooting. No, that's not what you think of when you hear school shooting. March 7, Birmingham, Alabama. Two students were shot accidentally during dismissal uh, time at a school. Okay, they were shot accidentally. I don't even know what that means, and I don't care to look it up, but that's at least becoming closer to a school shooting despite the fact that they were shot accidentally. I don't know whether that happens, but whatever. March 7, same day, Jackson, Mississippi. A student was shot at a dorm at Jackson State University. That's a school shooting? No, it's not. Sorry, it just isn't. March 10, Mount Pleasant, Washington. Two students were shot at a dorm at Central Michigan... Um, what? 
Mount Pleasant, Washington, at Central Michigan University, and police blamed a domestic dispute. Okay, so this was a domestic dispute. Was this a school shooting? No, it wasn't. It was a crime of passion, apparently. 27 February, Norfolk, Virginia. A student at Norfolk State University was apparently accidentally shot from an adjacent dorm room. So some kids were probably fooling around with a gun. The daggum thing went off, and it went through the rip through the dorm room, through a wall, and, it, and he was hit. Is that a school shooting? No, that's not a bloody school shooting. You see where this is going? I think there was a total of 15, but let me finish this up. Um, 27 February, same day. Okay. Uh, Itabena, Itabena, Mississippi. I don't know. A non-student was shot at a recreation center at Mississippi Valley State University. That is Jerry Rice's alma mater, I think. The GOAT. Yes, indeedy. Um, school shooting? No. A non-student was shot at a recreation center? No. Not a school shooting. February 24, Savannah, Georgia. A student, uh, a non-student shooter shot a non-student victim on the Savannah State University campus. So neither of these two were students. Uh, they just happened to be on the campus for whatever reason. That's a school shooting, evidently. Notice that none of these things happen inside of the school. It's just on the grounds or in some dormitories or whatever. February 9, Nashville, Tennessee. A 14-year-old shot a 17-year-old in a targeted murder attempt in a parking lot of a school. That at least comes a little closer to a school shooting, don't you think? I do. 5 February, Oxon Hill, Maryland. Two teenagers shot a third teenager in a robbery attempt outside of a school. That is not a school shooting. That's a robbery gone bad. Duh. It didn't, wouldn't make any difference if it was like at, at the local 7-Eleven. Or, um, or outside a school. Um, if you drive through the city that I live, I live in the suburbs outside the city, but if you were to drive through the center of the city, there's a high school in the center of the city right between two main roads in the city. If someone were to get shot in front of the high school on one of those roads, would that be a school shooting? Probably according to CNN it would. Gee, you see where this is going? A couple more. Three more, actually. 1 February, Los Angeles, California, 12-year-old girl accidentally shot two 15-year-olds. I don't know how that happens. The gun just went off twice. I don't know. Sir, he just, he just fell on the life 15 times. I don't know. January 31, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, city of brotherly love. That's a hot one. A 32-year-old non-student was shot outside a high school after a fight. So, was that a school shooting? No. It was uh, probably after a sporting event or something like that, and some kids were fighting, or kids, this guy's 32 years old. That's not a school shooting, as we would think of a school shooting. And finally, January 20, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, college football player, was shot to death on campus at a party. So, was that a school shooting? No. Again, it was probably another crime of passion. Duh. Give me a break. Um, and again, think about this. Did any of these things conjure up in your head, in your mind, what we think of when we hear of, an, of, of what was another school shooting or a mass shooting, uh, the now defunct term mass shooting? Of course not. not so I'm going to take another quick break, and hopefully I'll be back to, I think, wrap this bad boy up. Be right back. You're watching the Common Constitutionalist video podcast. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Okay, I'm back. And better than ever, baby. Yeah! So, back to the active shooter game story. Now that we've gotten this, this uh, school shooting nonsense out of the way, you can see what a bold-faced lie this all, all this stuff is. And that it's just propaganda... Uh, advancing the leftist agenda of anti-guns and gun confiscation, which is what they're eventually after. So it's, um, it's, quote, it's horrendous. Why would anyone think that this is a good idea to market something violent like that and be completely insensitive to the deaths of so many children, unquote, said a spokesman for the aforementioned anti-gun violence organization, Infertrust. We're appalled that this game is being marketed. I am too. 
any thinking person, any feeling person, any reasonable person, any human should be appalled that something like this is being marketed. A petition has been created to stop the release of the game and has already collected thousands of signatures. In a statement, Steam responded to the backlash, stating that the game, quote, does not... <laughs> this is real, this is just stupid. I mean, come on. You're better off just being silent than, than saying something as stupid as this. Steam res <laughs> responded to the backlash, stating that the game, quote, does not promote any, <laughs> any sort of violence especially any sort of mass shooting, and referred to the ex excerpt uh, describing the game as a dynamic SWAT simulator. Uh, yeah, sure. What a tease, Louise. <clears throat> so based on the high amount of critics and hate, the game creator will likely remove the shooter's role. However, the school setting will probably be remain. Okay, so this was this, uh, this was, uh, just this past Tuesday, as a matter of fact, the game was officially pulled. It wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna be released. All right, bully for them for pulling it. Whoever did that, for whatever pressure, that's fine. And again, this is the private sector. The government didn't step in and said, "You gotta pull that game. You gotta burn that book." No, they didn't. This was the private sector. This is a company deciding, uh, we don't need this kind of bad press. Um, this just ain't worth it. We're pulling this game. We're not allowing it to be released. Um, and Forbes wrote that Valve was right to remove it from Steam, both because it was a bad game and because of its content, or at least Valve had the right to do so, which I already said. Steam is not a public sector forum or site, all right? It is, of course, um, private sector, so they had every right to do whatever the crap they wanted to do. And if we want to, um, if we want to buy into their products, fine. If we don't, walk away. Like I said, it's the same with television. If you don't like to chill, change the channel. If you don't like uh, what's on the internet, turn off the internet. Walk away. Turn it off, go outside and play. I don't know. Um, so Ford writes, quote, here's the thing. Active Shooter's developer had every right to make the game. Yep. You as a consumer have every right to buy it and play it or not. Absolutely, I agree. And Valve, as the owner of the storefront, has every right to choose whether or not to sell the game in the first place. That is correct. They chose not to. That's not censorship, as some are proclaiming it's just a business decision and likely a very smart business decision. And again, whether it's smart or dumb, um, there are lots of business decisions like the, the Target bathroom decision and all these other nonsensical things that I think are stupid decisions, but they, they're a private company. They can make whatever decisions they want to make. doesn't make any difference to me. It's no sweat off my back. So, um, so Forbes continues. While I don't believe the video, uh, video games lead to real-world violence, um, we're going to have to agree to disagree, kind of, to that, and defend even this awful game's right to exist, I find the whole thing incredibly tasteless. In, time, in a time when school shootings seem to happen nearly every day, and they don't, and you bought into the lie too, or you didn't look into it very closely. Uh, maybe you should read Ben Shapiro's piece of the Daily Wire, uh, Mr. Forbes guy, and get the real facts. Valve doesn't need that kind of bad publicity either, and frankly, the game, uh, the game world has suffered, um, hasn't suffered any losses from active shooters' demise. And boy, howdy, they're right there. Um, so I disagree with the Forbes guy that it may lead to, um, to violent behavior. It probably isn't. If you're like my kids, who used to, we, we all played Call of Duty together and uh, other, um, other battle war games and whatnot, and that didn't lead to violent behavior because my kids were well-adjusted, smart kids, and they knew the difference between reality and fantasy, and, um, and they had me... Um, well, to put the fear of God in them if they acted up, all right? So, there, but there's no magic pill to this stuff. There's always going to, as, as long as there are human beings, there all, there's always going to be loonies. There's, there's just no getting around it. Um, so what's the real solution? And it, is there a real solution? So instead of, uh, instead of worrying about games like Active Shooter, how about we do Active Parenting? Um, occasionally giving your kids some tough love. Don't 
baby them all the time. Don't treat them like snowflakes. You're their parent. You're not their buddy. That type of thing. Um, if you, I was just talking about this to my son today, as a matter of fact, and I can't remember how the topic came up, but um, we were talking about one of his kids, one of his friends, ex-friends or something like that, that had had gone bad. I mean, not to the active shooter bad, but just had gone bad, gotten himself into trouble and whatnot, and and basically his group of friends tossed him aside. They just, now if, if this is the way you want to be, you're welcome to be that way, but you ain't going to be with us. That's tough love, too. Um, and it, that's, that's the way you have to be, and that's the way you know if this kid goes bad, all you have to do is look at the parents. Uh, that's a tough thing to say, and it's, and it's, I've even had to say it to parents face to face, and that's the most difficult thing you want to have to say that, sorry dude, you're a bad parent. But if you look at your kid, um, there's no excuse. If, you're, if you look at a bad kid, you just have to look at the parents, the way they're parenting whether they neglect the kid altogether or whether they just allow him free reign of the house and the world it's just bad parenting it's just there's no two ways about it and that's the way you get kids from to be you know not active shooters you get them well adjusted you teach them about the world you be their parent and you're you're there for them that's the way it works otherwise you get these fools that it may not drive them to be an active shooter but it certainly reinforces it. So that's about all I got to say today. This is Brent Smith. I'm the Common Constitutionalist signing off. See you next week.